What's up guys? Welcome back to Drag Boss Garage. Hey, this is just a little uh, prequel to the video that you're going to see. Now the video you're going to see is me installing Trek Boss Performance Products oil filter adapter, which is that larger adapter for the oil filter housing that allows you to run the Wix 1268 oil filter, which flows better, a little more volume, and the hole that's going to go into the oil filter is much larger compared to with the stock. You'll see some pictures, you'll see what I mean. Some people aren't into it. Hey, I said I'm going to try it. I also always run these, and you'll see it when I show you the oil pressure gauge. The filter mag. I always ran one. I think it's a little safety factor. In case there's any debris in there, it can pick it up. It's a pretty darn strong earth magnet. So the external line goes from here, back here, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then we'll check out the oil pressure. I want to give a shout out to Dr. Ron Racing. Thanks, Dr. Ron. Good luck with racing the, the Maverick with King Kong. Hopefully you get some times on that scoreboard so we can see what she runs. My plan with this is to take it to Mike Weeks on the 9th, put it on his run stand. We'll make a video going down there. He's got a lot of activity going on at Weeks Ford Country Garage. We'll put this on, run it, make sure there's no leaks or any issues with it. And I'm gonna get some fuel from him. So thanks Mike Weeks for hooking me up and then we'll be dynoing shortly thereafter. So here's the oil line. You can see right here. And it comes up here. I kind of routed it up here. Right back to here. Fits nice. Doesn't chafe on anything. All right, like I said before, I'm going to use Tim Meyer's uh, Track Boss Performance oil filter adapter, which adapts the Napa Gold 1268 instead of using the old Ford, whatever it is, 515. Which will replace this adapter here, the regular Ford adapter. If you look at the difference in size, you can already see there's a big difference. You know, whether that's gonna make much difference in pressure, just the volume alone of the filter will make a difference. So I used two AN fittings, I think these are half inch, and I already broke this free. And now I'm gonna bring that out. I don't know if we can get up and see in there. But here's mine, to give you a better idea of what we talked about cleaning things out. I made sure I radiused all that as best as possible. Got rid of all the rough areas. I could probably even do a little bit better. And I got a nice burst set, which I'll show you in another video. But I smoothed it all out. All right, so you got to see how mine's deburred. Does it make a difference? I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out. Well, hi, Lina. What are you making? A quick video. I gotta put Daddy, this thing yesterday. All right, hang on. Just put a half inch nut in here with a three quarter inch wrench and I'll just tighten it up. You can just go nice and easy. You don't want to smash your fingers. Should be good. I don't want to over tighten and crack anything. Let's test out this little bit. So here's the specs on the 51268 and the two 51515s. One is the standard and one is the race filter. More specs are at the end of this video. So here it is installed. And I put just a very little bit of blue Loctite on there. Not much at all. Just at the outer aspects. But you can see there's a nice transition. I don't know. Looks like a win-win situation to me. No problem.
Here's the, uh, I, I called it the 585 on my previous videos when I went over the oiling system. And what I'm gonna do is the auxiliary line that connects this point here to the back port where the oil sending unit is. And this feeds the mains. So what the point is, as I talked about in the other videos, is to make an auxiliary line that's gonna feed that point to add a little bit more extra oil to the bottom end and going towards the right side. Lots of people have talked about it, how it made a difference. Um, let's do it and we'll see how it looks. So here's the Aeroflow kit. It comes all pre-packaged and I took it apart to kind of see what the kit consists of. But here's my stock Ford Cleveland oil pressure sending unit off the back. What I'm going to do is install this, then put this on, then I can still have my pressure gauge, and then what I'll do is I'll have an oil pressure line that's going to feed this hose, obviously, and then this part here is going to go down by the block in the front. It's going to hook into that. So we'll install This looks like a nice little kit. So let's start mocking it up. Part's going to go there. It's a nice piece of the aluminum feels nice, nice anodizing. And I like this. I don't want to have to muster on my oil pressure gauge. We'll see a reading. It'll be good to compare what I've had in the past. This piece will go here. Let's take off the front half. Of course, I gotta do it the hard way. I can't take the socket off and put it on there. So yeah, this is the fitting here. Again, high quality. I don't really care for the 90 degree bend, but I don't think it's gonna make that much difference. Anything's better than having no oil back there or a little bit of additional. Let's see if we can get this to catch. Nice. And then you can see this tightens up. This will still rotate. Very nice piece. So I mocked up the auxiliary line. You can kind of see it up here. Just so I can see if I can cut some of it off so I don't have a lot of redundant line. But I just taped it into here in position. Now my, normally my vacuum pump mounted here. But with the engine plate, it's going to be mounting out here somewhere. So this should be a good place to put it. But I'll run it right along this intake, and I'll tuck it down into there. And then you can see back here how I did it. That way I can have my oil pressure gauge take off here. I can still feed the rear main, give it a little bit of additional support, see if it helps. So these are just like any AN fitting. Regardless, they're all the same principle. You want to make sure that when you take off this, that there's tape under there that you put the cap on pretty quick. You don't want the braided line to get in there because it's hard to get this on. So you've kind of twist it on as best as possible a few times. And I'll tell you what works good is whack it on this table. It's one of those things you just got to work it in there. That's pretty good. And you know here, I like to use that Walmart tech spray. It's good for stuff like this. Lube it up. Just turn it nice and easy. All right, so I set it up in the vise because I'm not going to struggle with it, and let's tighten it up. 
long as you're careful with it, you shouldn't have any issues. Kind of tight here. I got a bunch of junk here. So I'll just cut this end to fit, do the same thing, put the other end on, stay tuned, you'll see the final product installed. Custom at the Drag Boss Garage. So here it is, the 408 plus one, 409 cubic inches. She's all done, I'm just priming it up. I made sure I had oil coming out of all the rockers before I put the covers back on. Tristan Trickus was always saying he never let an engine go out of his shop without having oil coming out of the rocker arms. And it was. I'll show you. There's a picture here. So let's see what she does for oil pressure. It's got almost 75 pounds right there. I'll have to look back and see what I had before. So there it is, almost 75 pounds of oil pressure. That's plenty for this old girl. Get the water pump back on, put the wires back on and the distributor. Here's the stuff I have left. And then this is the other intake we're gonna be testing too. The King Cobra baby. Then we'll get back to the Pro Stock Mania. Get these other motors built. Those intakes are back there waiting.